and, and we're just now letting the public know what we've been up to. Yeah. All right, let's jump out to the, the phone lines if we can. Uh, Vicki in Lawrenceville, do you have a question? Okay. Um, one thing would be if you work, you could use a pay stub from your employer. Um, if you have a bank statement, even if it's something where you do your banking online, you could print off uh, something from your bank account from, from that, that entity's website. Uh, we really encourage everyone to go onto our website, take a look at the checklist, and um, try to find something that will work for you on the checklist. If you can't find something that will work for you on the checklist, um, when it's time for you to come into a customer service center, we've got people who are going to be working with you to try and find a solution to the problem. Um, we've got uh, provisions in our administrative rules for folks who are in assisted living facilities where a letter from the assisted living facility would suffice. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different ways for us to try and get you what you need. Um, and if, if the information on the checklist is not sufficient to solve your problem, please get in touch with us, talk to the folks in the customer service center, or call us at headquarters. We'll help you find the solution. And that was what I was going to ask. The, the information is on the website. You do also have a phone number, a customer service number. People can call beforehand, so you don't have to just go out there and take pot luck. Exactly. Absolutely. Take a look at the checklist, but if, if you need some, some human interaction to help you get to the answer to your question, right. um, please call us at our customer service center, 678 Four one three eight four zero zero. They're not there now, so don't call right now. Okay. Um, but they'll they'll be there, staffed Monday through Friday. Um, take a look at the at the information on the website. Give us a call if we if you need some help. And there are ways that exceptions can be made. That's one of the things that I definitely want everyone to know is if if there's someone who has a really unusual living situation, um, or an unusual work situation, or or you know, trouble getting that, that document that's going to prove their identity, um, we have resources that we can point you to. We will work with you to help you try and get your hands on the document, and we're going to give you time. It's not like we're going to have you come up to the counter, uh, take a look at what you've brought, and say, you know, we're sorry, we're not going to renew your license. We're going to give you at least 120 days, maybe longer, depending on the circumstances, to try and get the problem resolved. So uh, we've really built all of the functionality, all of our procedures on making sure that folks who are legally driving right now will be able to do that starting next week as well. So if, if just I want to make sure to go down kind of the checklist, most important things you'd want the listeners to know are what? Um, definitely be prepared. I think what you okay. said earlier is absolutely critical. Take a look at the checklist. Find your documents. Don't wait until the day that your license is going to expire. Think about it now. Yeah. If, you're, if your license is due to expire between now and Christmas, go ahead and take a look at the list. If you've got a child who's getting ready to take the learner's permit test or the road test, go ahead and lay your hands on those documents now or go ahead and identify the agency that you need to get in touch with to get that. If your child was born outside the state of Georgia like mine was, um, go ahead and reach out to the birth certificate, the vital records agency um, in the state where your child was born. If you were married outside of Georgia and you've misplaced your marriage license, go ahead and get in touch with the folks that issued that marriage license, and, and we can help you locate those folks if you have trouble with it. Okay, and then any other last kind of thoughts before we just jump back? So I want to make sure to grab all those little nuggets. I think what's important people have to understand is this is a substantive change. This is not a small little, you know, just checking off for, as an organ donor. I mean, this is a really big change to the process and the renewal process for many. It's going to affect everyone, it, regardless of their housing situation, regardless of their family situation. Really, all of us are affected. And, and we definitely want to help uh, make sure that you get what you need when you need it to the absolute extent that we can. And